Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's talk about how to observe Jupiter, and I'm talking about just with the naked eye. Because almost throughout the entire year can we see Jupiter. Jupiter is one of the brightest objects in the sky, after the Sun, obviously, the Moon, and Venus. And sometimes the brightness of Jupiter equals the brightness of Mars, but then Mars needs to be in opposition and very close to the Earth because Mars isn't always as close to the Earth during opposition, but at the brightest that Mars can be, it will equal the brightness of Jupiter. Well, the observed brightness of Jupiter is a minus 2.9 magnitude at its brightest, and that's again when Jupiter is at opposition, but when Jupiter is not at opposition, it drops down to about minus 2.0. But you can see there's not much of a range in the brightness. So whenever you see Jupiter, Jupiter is always going to be very bright, only to be outdone by Venus. Now it takes almost 12 years for Jupiter to make one trip around the Sun. So I try to make a schematic so you can see where you would expect to see Jupiter. And you can see Jupiter almost at any time throughout almost any year. And I'll show you why. So what I've done here is I have the Sun at the center. Here's the orbit of the Earth. I placed the Earth right there. And we're going to take one year snapshots. Every time the Earth is over there, where will Jupiter be? And so it could be any part of the orbit of the Earth, doesn't matter. We'll pick this part and we'll take it. At that moment, Jupiter is at opposition. We'll call that year zero. Now notice, since it takes almost 12 years for Jupiter to make a trip around the Earth, I mean, not around the Earth, but around the Sun, uh, then it, uh, it, that means that Jupiter will be in a different position by about 30 degrees every single year. Every single Earth year, Jupiter will have moved roughly 30 degrees, to be more precise, about 30.35 degrees. So, when the Earth goes around the Sun, comes back after one year, Jupiter will now be located over here. After two years, Jupiter will be located there. After three years, after four, after five, after six, after seven, after eight, after nine, 10, 11, after 12 years, Jupiter will be slightly past the point where it was 12 years earlier, and the whole thing just kind of starts over again. Then the second part is notice that the planets will always rotate in a counterclockwise direction, just like they do in the orbits. Now, not every planet, because Venus is of course an exception, but definitely Earth and, and, and uh, Jupiter will rotate in, in a counterclockwise direction. So here's the direction of the rotation of the Earth. And notice that if the Earth is over here and the Sun is there, this, if a person is standing on the Earth pointing in this direction, that will be evening for that person. Six hours later it will be midnight, and six hours later it will be morning. Of course, those are proximate because that changes through the seasons, but let's just take it as is. Take it as a 12-hour day and a 12-hour night. So notice when the person's over here, what, when can they see Jupiter? So essentially they can see Jupiter when Jupiter is about here, all the way to when Jupiter is there. So this whole region of the sky is visible. Close to the Sun would not be visible because the sky would still be too bright for Jupiter to appear. But after the sky begins to darken a little bit, then Jupiter will appear when it's over here somewhere. So only when Jupiter is here will you not be able to see Jupiter. And of course in the evening, you won't be able to see Jupiter through this area right here. But then when it becomes midnight, notice that this part of the sky will be visible. And by the time the morning comes, this part of the sky will be visible. So only only about this portion of the sky will not be visible when the Earth is over there. And then if Jupiter happens to be in this region right here in its orbit, you will not be able to see it. So year six, Jupiter will not be able to be seen over here. Then, then as the Earth is over here, year seven, you won't be able to see Jupiter over when the Earth is in this position. So when the Earth is in certain positions and Jupiter is in certain positions, there's a certain portion of the sky where Jupiter could be when it's not visible, but throughout the entire night, from evening to morning, you can see that Jupiter can be almost anywhere in its orbit, and it would be visible. It would be brightest when Jupiter is over here and the Earth is over here, and it would be dimmest if Jupiter is here and the Earth is there, because then the distance would be greater than when you take the distance over here. So that's the difference between magnitudes of about minus 2.9 and minus 2.0, depending upon the relative position of Earth and Jupiter. But here you can see that 
almost any night you're going to be able to see Jupiter except for maybe a month, month and a half out of each year where Jupiter will just be on the other side of the Sun and you're not going to be able to see Jupiter at that point. So that hopefully gives you a good idea. Now of course you want to probably get a, a magazine or something or just get online and it'll tell you exactly where Jupiter is at every single night, at what time you're going to see it, where and so forth. That's already, already available, but at least now you can see the mechanics of that and why Jupiter is almost always visible as, a port, as opposed to Mars, which has larger periods, or Venus has larger periods when it's not visible. And, um, and you can see why, because the relative position of Earth and Jupiter. And that is how we know. Yes, that's the case, but obviously when it comes to Uranus and Neptune, they're not visible with the naked eye, otherwise you'd be able to see them almost at any time of the year, same thing. And Saturn is the same way, but Saturn is not as bright, so it's not as obvious. So it's not like you walk outside and just randomly look up and go, oh, there's Saturn. You kind of have to know the sky just a little bit and go, hmm, I think that's Saturn because it's relatively bright, the color is a little bit more yellowish, and it doesn't fit into any of the constellations. If you know the constellations, then you go, that's, that's uh, Saturn. But with Jupiter, you just walk out and go, I don't care where the constellations are, that's Jupiter because it's that bright. It's just so much brighter than anything else in the sky, even Sirius, that you can clearly see that it's Jupiter, not something else. So, the moon and Venus, of course. Yeah, I can always tell the difference between Venus and Jupiter. Uh, just because Venus is that much brighter and Venus is usually either visible in the morning or in the evening close to sunrise or sunset so that kind of gives it away as well. Did you tell Laura that you can only see Venus as sun something? Uh, right after sunrise, I mean before sunrise and right after sunset, well not right, usually for a few hours in each direction but yeah for not that long. Uh, but you told her the reason? The reason is because uh, Venus is close to the Sun, so whenever you look at Venus, you're kind of looking in the direction of the Sun as well, right? So only when Venus gets kind of far away in its orbit from the Sun at that angle, I think the maximum angle is like 48 degrees or so, uh, that's when you can see Venus. Okay. 